Uh, but I think first the verb are is in in a different time. Right. Uh, no, no, it it me. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, in the in the first sentence, the it's a it's a noun. Uh, Which is the, a noun? Uh, the cut. Okay. Because it's referring uh, to a, to the to the it's referring to the shape of your hair. No. The shape. It is not the shape. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Because if you say, if you have my hair, which is a noun, and then directly after the hair, you have another noun, you cannot have a second noun after a noun. Okay. So definitely it's not a noun. But anyway, don't think about grammar. Think about meaning. Uh, in, in the first sentence, the meaning is that uh, uh, in in the, in that in that place or, or uh, in that uh, in that place uh, this uh, or the, uh, this this object or this this person uh, in that place uh, her her no, her hair or uh -huh, okay. was uh cut or was uh -huh. uh -huh. was cut uh but by some someone by else. someone else very good very and very good in the second one uh, no because uh i'm observing the subject i or uh, the uh, the pronoun and the uh, verb uh, uh, together. So in the second one, I I understand it that uh, in that in that in that place he got uh, got uh, by by self. No. Uh -huh. By who? By. Uh, himself like himself or herself like himself uh, when you don't know the gender of the person you use them ah uh, okay ah uh, okay uh, he you know this person uh, cut uh, themselves mm -hmm. uh, their their hair no. exactly uh -huh. mm -hmm. cut their hair themselves Switch. Because if you say cut themselves, I understand a different thing. Okay, so uh, this person uh, cut, no, uh, cut their hair themselves. Uh -huh. Their hair themselves, exactly. That is correct. You said something very important in the first place. You said in the first example, the hair was cut by another person, which grammatically is a passive voice. Passive voice is used when you, uh, when the subject is not so important as the action. The action is the important thing. You see? So this sentence is a combination of passive voice and delegating information we use this formula the verb get and the verb the, the action in past participle to indicate that this was a delegated task that's why the question do you cut your hair do you cut your hair or do you pay somebody to cut it for you Uh, in the first one, uh, this person paid, mm -hmm. and in the second one, uh, uh, 
this person uh, cut their uh, themselves. Uh -huh. uh, they didn't cut themselves. If they cut themselves, they die. Ah, the, uh, this person uh, uh, got their hair themselves. <laughs> Excellent. That's correct. Well, that is very, very important. And this is something we don't, we don't pay attention to when we are transcribing from Spanish to English. As you can see, it's very difficult to, to build these sentences. You are experiencing this issue in this moment, because you, you are trying to say uh, the object of the sentence. What is the object of the sentence, the hair or the person? And if I position the words in a different way, I am expressing a different thing, right? So this is a very, very important topic for upper intermediates and advanced to take care of the position of words in order to give the correct meaning, the correct message you want to you want to to imply. Yes, and I I I think this uh, maybe this is more uh, confused because confusing ing ah this is more ah yes because it's it's a now. This is more confusing because uh, I was thinking in these two sentences, uh, uh, what is, uh, uh, which, which could be the, the, uh, the equivalent uh, in our native uh, language in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, these two sentences has the just one form. So mm -hmm. you don't have these two forms in our language. Uh -huh, in our language, you are you refer to I think to the to the second one. The second That's one. the reason again. One more time, it's very important for upper intermediates because if an upper intermediate doesn't need their native language anymore, the upper intermediate should find the ways native people talk and understand why, but not understanding the equivalent in, a, in the mother language. That is not necessary because it doesn't exist. And, and many, many students don't use this sentence because they keep thinking in Spanish and they, when they make an exam, when they make a TOEFL certificate or whatever, they have very basic constructions, very elementary constructions of of, uh, of English so they understand hey I have a very good level of, of vocabulary why I have elementary elementary points in the TOEFL uh, because of your structure your structures are too basic for 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 the vocabulary that you manage that's because we are keeping thinking in Spanish and trying to find the, the equivalent in our language and what is it? What is it the same the same way in, in Spanish? But that doesn't exist in Spanish. So how can you find it? Yes, and in in even in in the Spanish, you you don't need to mention or to say uh, or to refer the even the place mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I think that this verb or uh, or this action uh, cutting your hair. Uh, I think almost uh, almost always no <laughs> is understood as an action that someone uh, do uh, for does. you. That someone does. Uh, that someone uh, does uh, for you. Right. In general. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't mention the place or you don't need to specify i think always uh, people here uh, when you say that you get a haircut i think usually people assume that someone uh, did, did it for, for you, you. <laughs> precisely 
precisely. So if you say I cut my hair in English, that's very different. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's very, very different. In English, people will assume that you did it yourself. Uh -huh. in, in, in Spanish, you say I, I cut my hair and and in general people assume ah, he, he went for to some uh, to somewhere uh, someone uh, cut uh, their hair and that's it. <laughs> and in English? But in English is different because if you only say that part, I cut my hair, uh, people understand that uh, that you maybe in your home uh, you took in your the house. Ties, in your house. Ah, in your house. And you never say your home. That that is redundant. Ah, okay. So, at your house. At your house or at home. At home. Okay. At home, you took the scissors and scissors. Scissors. Okay. You took your uh, the scissors and you cut. Uh, uh, their cut. <laughs> Their hair, so exactly you cut yourself. Exactly, you cut the, the hair yourself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. What other tasks do you think get this treatment? What other what other tasks do you delegate? So uh, what other uh, verbs? Could work in the same way. Mm -hmm. Think about things that you don't know. You you don't do yourself. Things that. You delegate. Hmm. Maybe transport. Transport, okay, for example. I think, I think. What do you mean? Yes, for example, if you say, if you would like to say, no. Uh, I, trans, I transport me, no. I transport me here. No, I, I think that's it. I think that sounds weird. But, but um, when, don't make the example. Give me, what are you thinking about? Uh, what, who does it for you? What does, what do they do for you? Uh -huh, for example, you are, in, you are uh, at home and you need to go for your, to your job. Mm -hmm. So, you need, and for example, your car is not working, maybe. Okay, okay. So you need a transport to, for going uh, to your job. So maybe you use Uber or a taxi. Mm. But that is not delegating because you, you are, physically you are in the car. And there is an expression for that. You say, I take a car, I take an Uber, I take an, uh, an Uber ride. So that is not delegating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think about food things that you pay. Okay, okay, food. For example, Uh, 
I could, no, I cook. Do you cook it? Uh, no, for example, I, I don't cook, for example. You don't cook it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Another person will cook it. In a moment, I'm gonna teach you how to build a sentence, okay? Because you are, you are ignoring the, the formula, but I'm gonna teach you how to observe that. Okay, look at look at the, the sentence, and there is a verb that is telling you the meaning of delegating tasks, which is the verb get. You are not considering the verb get. You see? So if you want to say that a person cooks the food for you, How do you, how do you say it? I get my cooking. No. My cooking, but why in ING? Read the sentence here, read this section. Ah, uh, okay. I get my cooked. What do you get first? Ah, uh, my food. My food. Don't. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I get my food cooked at that place. Exactly. exactly. Now you get it? Yes. It's a verb get, followed by the thing that you are delegating, and followed by the verb in past participle. Ah, uh, so. So the second example should be, I cut my foot. Which is you doing it yourself? Uh -huh. You see the difference? Yeah, yes. Find another. What other things do you delegate? Think about your car. That's the first one we always use. Maybe, uh, I don't know if re recharge oil is correct. No, recharge. Oil. When your oil tank is empty. Yeah, but you don't recharge it. No, you go to the gas it. station, but what is the action that you do there? Uh... Jesus, uh, the thing is that you don't, you don't. You, you need to add all oil additional oil no, uh, for your tank don't you change it well change the oil is different now change the oil is different than getting another bottle ah uh, yeah because for uh, example, i remember i remember the word is refill ah refill ah refill. okay yes yes uh, similar to uh, uh, soda for example, in that. Ah, okay. Because you're getting more more liquid. Yeah, so for example, in Mexico, I think in general, the gas station, I the, there is someone who helps you to refill your the oil for again, your car, right? Say that again. Refill you or refill the oil tank? Uh, refill the tank. Uh -huh. For, for you? you. Uh -huh. Exactly. Be careful with the person. That that's uh, that's precisely the thing I need you to take care. Ah yes. No, One more no, time. What is it in Mexico? Oil tank. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You don't get you don't get refilled in your like, your body. <laughs> no. That's, no, that's important so, objects. Exactly. So I think in 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 the Mexico case, always there is someone who helps you with this task. With what tasks? 
refilling oil. Refilling oil, okay, okay. But in the case of United States, it's a self service. Hmm? Build the sentence. In Mexico? In Mexico, it's not a self service, or no? Use the or with refill. this one who help you? Use the structure that we are studying. Oh, oh okay, yeah, but with the structure. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in in Mexico, there is one who. Uh, Watch out! We are not speaking about the other person. The other person is not relevant. Okay, in Mexico, I no. Uh huh. Or we, or you. Ah yes. Uh, in Mexico, you get uh, your. Uh, Tank refill. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in Mexico, you get your tank refilled. And then the connector for passive voice. Um, by someone else? By someone else. Exactly. And in the United States, you refill your time uh, by yourself. Correct. Uh -huh. You see? Yes. That's the way we use it. Exactly. You can use either the verb get and i'm gonna now show you the structure we use the verb get or the verb have and we hand over the task to someone else other verbs about delegating include done fixed Checked, repaired, picked up, printed, built, paid, delivered, painted, covered. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. And the structure that you used in this moment, the one of refilling your tank, is structure number two. The person gets the oil tank refilled by someone else in Mexico. This is the structure we are using, or you used. All right, do you get it? Okay, so so you have these two options. Yep. The second option, the first option now, is using the verb have or get, but then look at the third component. The third component is a person. Uh huh. In the first formula we are going to mention the person who is going to delegate the task that, that that received the delegating task and then the simple verb this second person can be an assistant can be the the clerk at at the at the gas station uh, the the mechanic uh, who fixed your car and you can you see the construction of this sentence in these examples. Read the first two. The leader had his assistant arrange the meeting for his colleagues. 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 Uh, uh, 
Elijah has uh, his assistant arranged for meetings for his colleagues. What had how can I in how can I understand hat in this context? So it's the same as get. Okay. Sorry, no, it is not uh, for 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 a possession. Precisely. Okay. So it's for expressing that he is obtaining help. Getting. Getting ah, help. Getting. <laughs> or having help. Okay. 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 But I want you to observe the construction of the sentence, not only the meaning, the construction too, because when, when we, when you are thinking in English, you you transcribe, you you translate from Spanish to English, and the the that makes us have different structures not paying attention to the position of words. Yes. In this case, his assistant is directly after the birth. After the verb had. And then after these two expressions, we have the verb arrange, which is the delegating task. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so the first one is the, the subject. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who, who required the service, for example. Uh -huh. Second one is the, the hat or get, no? Hat or get, the, right. Who, who will help you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And finally, the service that you are requiring. Exactly. This is chunk number one. The person who receives the action, having get, then the person who does the action, and then simple verb. Okay. Right? I want you to see that the second example is the same meaning as the first, but it's a different a different word. Read the second example. The leader had the meetings arranged for his colleagues. 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 Uh -huh. Do you understand the difference? Uh -huh. no. But the, the second example is not a is not an example of the chunk two, right? The second example is not an example of the chunk two. Yes, it is. Observe the things again. The leader, which is a the subject, then have or get, and then what is this? It's the other, the other noun. The other noun. You see, it's not a person, but it's the thing that is delegated. Um. Read the first example. The leader had his assistant arrange for, no, his assistant arranged the meeting for his colleagues. What will the assistant arrange? The, the meetings. The meetings. Now look at this second example. Uh, the leader had the meeting arranged. 
Okay. What happened to the assistant? Oh, but, but in the second sentence, the assistant doesn't, didn't help. Read the, the parenthesis. Passive voice is not necessary to mention the assistant. Ah, okay, okay. The leader didn't do it. No. Himself. You see? The leader delegated the task to the assistant. And the yes. assistant arranged the meetings for him. But all yes. this is implicit. Yeah, because in the second in the second in the second example, uh -huh, a range is a description of the meeting. Exactly. It's describing the the, uh -huh, the meeting. But it's describing a process, something that happened, like the the, the something that happened before to the meetings. Yes. Well, I, I, I'm thinking that maybe in the second in the second example, uh, because I uh, know uh, if uh, because it's a the leader had the meeting arranged. Uh -huh. but maybe uh, this sentence could accept uh, two options. That the assistant uh, help the leader, or maybe even the leader uh, arrange themselves the meetings. Kind of, but you're changing the meaning. Why is the assistant so important in your example? If you say the assistant arranged the meetings, your your first person, the person who receives the most important, the protagonism, is the assistant. And the leader became irrelevant. Uh -huh. Yes. It doesn't mean that it is wrong, but you need to check your context. Are we speaking about the leader or are we speaking about the assistant? Both are correct. Grammatically, both are correct. So what does your context needs? Yes, yes, okay. So if we say we can add this example. We can say the assistant arranged the meetings for the leader. In this example, is more important. Is the most important. No. Is more important for the story. You need to check context in order to decide which to use. That's the difference between one and another. So again, we are not saying wrong and, 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 and right. We are saying which context is the one that is that you are going to use. Did you get it? Yes. Strange? Uh... Um, yes, just a, a, a little bit. I think my issue was the verb uh, have. Mm -hmm. Think because about I, uh, 
I have always used uh, have for expressing possession. Right. Or if not, it's for a possession, it's, a, it's an auxiliary for building the uh, the perfect tense. No? Mm -hmm. But here, uh, have is similar or, or is used as equivalent of get. Mm -hmm. And that that uh, caused me issues. <laughs> well, learn 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 this as a second, a third, a third use. Uh -huh. Whatever have, put it very very apart from it. It's very different from the other two that you mentioned. Yes, yes, completely. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And all of that, Chucho knows it. So you gotta you gotta you gotta make some examples. For tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I think that could be a, a good uh, uh, challenge. Yep, that's right. <laughs> challenge that's... in the teacher's memory. Exactly. <laughs> think about think about other other tasks when this probably is necessary, like other okay. contexts when this is probably necessary, to see how how we can build it. Okay. So that's it, brother. We finished for today. Okay. Right. Have a very good day. Think about examples. And we continue okay. tomorrow. Thanks a lot, teacher. Bye, man. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.